All right, y'all. So we up to the book of First John. It happens to be the twenty third book of the New Testament, but it is the sixty uh, second book of the entire Bible. So it's the six. First John is number sixty two in the sixty six books of the Bible, and you pronounce it just the way I just said. First John, J O H N F I R S T J O H N, and it's number. 62. <laughs> 62 of the whole Bible, but number uh, 23 in the um, New Testament. And the cool thing about this is John is known as the close friend of Jesus. You know how uh, little kids, when they like big kids, especially, you know, big kids that are cool and nice to them, they'd be like, that's my best friend. You better not mess with my best friend. And they do that up until they go old and die. That's their best friend. Don't mess with their best friend. They ain't playing. They will bite your ankles. So. <laughs> and so John wrote this book um, to, again, combat false teachings. And he did it because um, when you teach lies, it uh, breaks people's faith. And so you that is teaching a lie, you can become responsible for them. If they go to hell, your fault, your fault, and you will pay. And so you don't ever want to lead anybody astray. God says to walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But he also says, do not tempt people. Do not lead people astray. Don't do it. Don't be seducing people to go the wrong way. God will, he will tan that butt. You heard? I ain't playing. He on mm, tan that birdie for you. Be like, yeah. Jesus, oh, Papa. <laughs> y'all remember those butt whoopings, right? <laughs> for some of y'all, that ain't so far away. I mean, probably was yesterday, but <laughs> I remember the last time I got a butt whooping. It hurt so much that I decided I wasn't gonna get none no more. I was not going to be putting myself in a situation ever again to get a butt whooping. That, I just could not know. Uh Uh-uh. I was young and I decided, I don't like this. Whatever she say do, that's what I'm going to do. And then I had to learn another lesson. Don't be in the same room with foolishness. If you're in the same room or the same area or the same backyard, which I happen to be, which was even my own house. If even on your in your own house, your brothers and sisters are doing something stupid. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say stupid because that means what? it's unfaithful. I shouldn't say stupid, though. If they're doing something that is not wise, something that, you know, you will get your butt whooped for because your mama just said, do not do this. Do not do that. Or if your parents said, wait for me. Heed their warnings. Because if you do the opposite of whatever they told you to do, and ain't a life and death matter that will cause you to have to do such a thing, like turn on the barbecue without them there, (laughs) putting charcoal on top of a a half-empty propane tank and turning on the propane, propane, but the propane ain't coming out, You just hear this hiss because it starts to hiss before it blow. (laughs) And you got fire on top of it. (laughs) Almost killing all the kids in the backyard and blowing up the house. (laughs) It's funny now, but it wasn't funny back then because I even said, you know, that thing is kind of making some noise. Mama said, don't do that. I don't think, you know. We should be back here. My brother goes, I'm grown. I said, well, you 12. And I was eight. He goes, well, I'm the man of the house. I'm in charge. I was like, uh. But mama said, I'm in charge. I said, okay, okay. You in charge, okay. And lo and behold, my mama just happened and she didn't go to the store. So the Holy Ghost must have told her to ride around the corner. 
because she read she she went out the she went out the backyard rode around the block took her time sat on the corner for a few minutes and then drove on up into the back into the yard and caught us back there i'm trying to tell him don't and he telling me whatever i'm grown <laughs> And I get in trouble because I stood there and I didn't go find somebody bigger. I didn't go find an adult. And so, yeah, I got in trouble. I was equally guilty. So that's such a situation where if you in the car or you in the store with your friend while they stealing, even though you didn't steal nothing, you are still an accomplice to their theft and their ignorance. If you drive in the getaway car, you are just as equally Guilty as a person that robbed the store or the person. You feel me? So we can apply this to white collar or blue collar crimes. If you know about it, you at fault. So I say, don't know about it. Walk away. Tell somebody if you absolutely know (laughs) that can actually do something. But in all situations, when you see crazy about to happen, pew. Make a beeline for the dough, baby. And that there is what John was trying to say. First John, he was trying to say, make a beeline away from crazy. Because you know the gospel because we told it to you. You know in the gospel, don't let somebody take what you know away from you. Because when you know a thing and you learn a thing, no one can take it away from you unless you give them permission. And the enemy is always seeking permission to take the truth away from you. He's always seeking permission to lead you in the wrong way that'll get you incarcerated or dead or get you a butt whipping by your mom and your daddy. See, came all the way back around, didn't we? All right, so there you go. That is First John. Heed wisdom. Believe the word of God. It changes not. Amen. So don't change with the wind. Glory to God. Jesus loves you. Let's keep going to the next one.